we're going to talk a little bit about tech. Yeah. Of course. So, yeah, um, we have a, a great show today. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, technology and the gadgets that you're going to be getting for the holiday season. So, the top gadgets that will be coming up. Uh, also, we'll be talking to the editor in chief of EBOM. And you're going to get a kick out of this, Jim, because I know you kind of like that snarly humor and that type of thing. Well, EBOM, oh, yeah. of course, is very, very popular for that. So, um, Colby Drosher will be on, and he is the editor in chief of Ebomb. So that should be a lot of fun. They're introducing a new daily app, so that should be a lot of fun to hear about that as well. Um, and today in tech, we need some music for that, Jim. Today in tech, no, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to put anything up. So, all right. I don't know if you know this or not, but the patent for the electro photo- electro photography. Oh, there we go. It's the best I could do on that, short notice. That's good. It's actually, parade that's not music. Bad at all. Yeah, yeah. Very patriotic here. So, actually, he invented the modern day copier. And, uh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, you think about this, and I'm just going to throw these numbers out here. 1955, four years before the introduction of the 914, which is by Xerox, by the way. And, of course, uh, the actual device, I'm trying to read through my notes real quick here since uh, I was a little unprepared. The, the Zero Graph, Graphy, is that how it's pronounced? X E R O G R A P H Y. Why are you looking Zero- at me? Xerography. Okay. Xerography. Xerography. That sounds right. I remember that when I was in school. Remember that hand crank thing that they would do to run tests off and things? Yeah. That's what that was. It was actually part. It was almost like a carbon copy type of device. You'd make this kind of screen and then and then roll over on it. So okay. So anyway, um, before that, they figure that there were approximately nine and a half. All right. 20 million copies made gotcha. before the ni- before 1955. So about 20 million copies a year were produced, okay? Within five years, that went to 9.5 billion. So that's how dramatic of a change that that one little device made. Of course, in 2004, more than 3 trillion copies produced. That's an average of 10,000 for each office worker in the United States. That's uh, 12 zeros. 12 zeros. A, a three and a half, uh, that'd be 3.5 with a with a, a buttload of zeros at the end. And that is still... 11 zeros. Three and a five and 11 zeros. That is still, what, four to five times less than the dollar amount for our debt in this country. Mm-hmm. Something like that. We won't get into the politics, yeah. so, but yeah, yeah. So anyway, I find it interesting that, uh, and of course, nowadays, we don't think anything about making a copy of something. In fact... Most of us have some type of copy machine in our house because it comes part of our printers when we buy them now. The all-in-ones with the scanners and the faxes and all that stuff just all come together. So anyway, so that's this day in history there. Of course, there was also, and this is interesting as well, a Nobel Prize in Medicine awarded in on October 11th, 1979 to Alan Cormick and Godfrey Hunsfield for the development of a computer-assisted tomography or CAT scan so yeah. yes 1979 mm. and of course in medicine today of course uh, there were three million cat scans in 1980 and today of course that it was is, that recent it, it seems like it, we've always had it that's 80 that's, that's 35 years ago though when you think yeah. about that yeah okay uh so yeah and you know nowadays of course it's just common medical practice it is a yeah. cat scan. common procedure so uh amazing how that is relatively new as well and of course uh jim and i were just talking about this uh we have some special show announcements as well uh next week we'll be coming to you live from charlotte great town charlotte north, north carolina. carolina yeah yeah be there we're gonna be doing a whole hour on internet banking next week and we'll be coming to you live from ally bank well that's the place to be so, we'll be in charlotte it's a very high-tech town yeah and uh ally bank has actually one million they, they are a total the bank is totally online they yeah. have uh, one they've sur- surpassed one million subscribers so right. pretty pretty amazing thing so uh yeah so we have that uh then of course we're off to bentonville arkansas the following week well dang so we're gonna be all over the place we're gonna be covering the technology around walmart uh, the following show. And then after yeah, that, of course, we'll have our annual Halloween show as we're going to try to scare you with what your computer will do. So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That be too hard. Exactly right. So we got all kinds of crazy stuff that will be coming at you up in the next couple of weeks. Of course, we're going to get into the technology that we're going to be buying for our holiday gift giving. Right. And uh, I have quite a list here of things that are going to be kind of hot. And before the break, we're going to get into one of them, Jim. So, um you have a tablet, right? 
A tablet? Yes. No. Okay. You have a, but you have a, a smartphone. I have a smartphone. So, a Droid. Yeah, and in your smartphone is a larger screen smartphone. So I would imagine you use it as a phone and a uh, like a phablet type of deal. Oh you know? yeah, I yeah. surf the net on it all the time, and I do things on it. So do you have a problem typing on that thing? Oh God, yeah. So Logitech, and I have one for my tablet, but it would work on yours as well. They actually are coming out with a Bluetooth uh, mini keyboard. Cool. So, and it's multi-device, meaning that you can, let's say you have it uh, set up for your for your computer, you can flip the switch and it goes to your smartphone. Yeah. So if you want to type a text off to somebody Very or nice. whatever, you could yeah. do that, you know, uh, on your tablet or whatever. And I think this is going to be a hot deal this year. Uh, going to be running forty nine ninety nine, and uh, that'll be kind of kind of cool to get. So, and with that, Jim, let's just go to break because I know we're going to yeah. have a call coming up after the break here. And uh, stay tuned, everybody, because we have quite a special guest for you today coming from Ibram, Colby Drosher. So come on back. Currently, it's 48. Here's Sean Hannity. Weekday afternoons on Super Talk 1270. Follow the Guru of Geek at Facebook.com backslash the Tech Ranch or Twitter at Guru of Geek or the Tech Ranch.com. Here again is your Guru of Geek, Marlo Anderson. And we want to thank our listeners across the country and around the world who follow us on the Blueberry Network. In fact, we were enjoying some blueberry muffins before mm, the show. Blueberries. I bet you can't wait for those. Some Marlo muffins. <laughs> Actually, they're Alice muffins, but oh. okay. <laughs> Your wife made them. Yes, she did. Oh, okay. She did, yeah. yeah she, I'll tell her they're very good. Yeah, I will do that. I will do that. Uh, of course, we're on the Tech Podcast Network. We're on Tuned In. We're on the Roku, Apple TV, and of course, our own app, Radio Pup. So go ahead and grab the Tech Ranch anytime you like on any of those uh, media streaming places. Uh, we are, of course, um, Katie, Miss Metaverse, is not joining us, Jim, today. Oh, not here. Okay. She's not going to be here, unfortunately. Uh, she's in Abu Dhabi today. Oh. Uh, she's doing some type of uh, talk over that way. I have no idea. I'm sure about technology. You know, she'll be over there talking, uh, educating people over that way as well. So it'll be interesting to hear what she has coming back next week from that as well. Uh, joining us on the phone, the editor-in-chief of Viambi. Uh, I have to pronounce that right as well. It is Monday, Jim. I am just messing up like yeah. crazy here. So, But editor-in-chief uh, from, from Viambi and Ebom um, is Colby Drosher. Colby, how you doing? Good, good. Happy Monday, guys. Well, <laughs> we're struggling through it here, Colby. That's well, all I know, can it's say. It's funny because I, I think our name, Viyumbe, is probably it was probably chosen at one point because it's so difficult to pronounce. Really? So, so I'm not the I'm, only one that's messed up on this, is what you're saying. I No, it happens all the time, and I would imagine that it was just a decision so we could really kind of mess with people and troll people since it's such a spirit of the site. Obviously, you have done that okay. So, all right. <laughs> so, tell me a little bit. You guys have a, a kind of a well. Give us the history first. We'll back up a little bit of uh, Ebom, and uh, then we'll get into what you got going on. Okay. Um, so, Ebom's world was kind of uh, it was an early internet site. It was pre YouTube video hosting, and really what they focused on was just kind of you know a lot of fail videos, a lot of pranks. Uh, they used to mess with the users a lot. It was it was kind of a it's kind of an edgy, fun site that, um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot in that landscape yet. Nobody really knew what was going on. <clears throat> and then eventually is, that market kind of got more and more saturated. There were a lot more sites that were competitors and all that. Sure. We, we started to kind of develop our own voice. And over the years, you know, the site moved from, from New York to over to San Francisco. And we just kind of moved with the times a little bit. And, uh, and, and of but course, really we've, we're just one of the we're one of those early internet sites that stuck around. And you know, I, I was telling Jim earlier a little bit about Ebom's world. You're, you're really kind of a snarky humor type of website. That's the way I kind of describe it. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. And we have a, a lot of loyal users that just kind of go and they mess with each other and mess with other people, you know, outside of the site and kind of bring all the stories back. And it is very very popular. In fact, uh, um, you know, if you if you track websites at all. Ebom's World has been around, like I said, for quite a while and uh, has consistently been a better than top 5,000 website in the world, which is an amazing feat. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been, we've had, we've had a great run and, and it's, it's, you know, it's all, a lot of it, I would say most of it has to do with our users. 
so yeah, we've had some we've had some great peaks, but in general, it's been a really consistently high traffic site. And if, if you've never heard of E Bombs World, how do how do you get there? Um, you can you can Google E Bombs World. Uh, there's some, also some some videos that we're famous for, like. You can look up the G.I. Joe PSAs or End of the World. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah it sound, sounds fantastic. And, and uh, I, I will say I have been, I haven't been on there recently. You're getting me uh, all fired up to get back on there again because I used to follow you guys quite a bit in my early years as well, you know, so, um, but I kind of follow this. And, and Jim, of course, loves snarky humor. <laughs> In fact, when I think of snarky humor, snark, snark. I think of Jim. So he would actually be a great contributor to E Bomb's world, actually. We are treading oh. snark infested waters here. <laughs> <laughs> you, re- you really would, Jim. You should become a contributor on E Bomb's. Oh, okay. Well, what I contribute? I, well, whatever you think is snarky. Just a, yeah. a lot of snark. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the word of the day. You could yeah. upload some snarky galleries, or you can jump into the comments and really mess with people. Yeah, well, I do that on do Facebook that. now, so maybe I should. Maybe you re- I should. You really would be good on there. I'm telling well, you. you. You really should maybe, be on Maybe there, that's so. where I'll be discovered. Maybe so. Hell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, give, so. me, give me an example of something to be snarky about. Oh, well, what a, what a lot of our users do is say, you know, God, a beaver comes back in the news. Our users will <laughs> just, you know, they'll, they'll make a gallery or they'll make a blog that's really just kind of just really, really hating on him, or, you know, it'll be a Kardashian Instagram upload, yeah. and, you know, all of a sudden, it's just, you know, she's back in the news for absolutely nothing that everybody wants to hate on. Well, of course. Or anything, anything like that. Okay. Well, I love getting snarky in pop culture, especially music, because I'm old enough, I'm an, I'm an old geezer, I'm an old baby boomer, I grew up with all the cool bands. I saw all the cool yeah, bands. Yeah, exactly. In fact, you were a roadie for some of the cool bands. I'm just kidding. So, yeah. That's right. And I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm sitting here last night just listening to Neil Young and, and oh, yeah. Bob Dylan and yeah. sounds all night long. Okay. Great, great. I'm there with you. So, okay, so moving on now, you guys have kind of a new thing that you're bringing out, so why don't you bring everybody up to date? Yeah, so we actually just launched a new app, um, and our new app is the Ebon's Digest, and what it is is it's a slight departure from what we normally do. Uh, and what we normally do is we publish stuff throughout the day. Usually about once an hour something new comes out unless something really big happens and we push it. Uh, and by push it, I mean to our homepage or to our uh, million. We just hit a million likes on Facebook recently. Um, but what the app is, is it's actually a digest. So it's, it's, a, it's a more condensed version of what we have to offer. So it's, it's less sifting. It's less... It's less discovering. It's more we're pushing something straight to you. Okay. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot prettier than than what we've had in the past, and it's just it's a it's a very clean kind of magazine version of the site. And how do we find your app? Uh, you can find it in the iOS store. Okay. We have a Android version that's coming out very soon, but not yet. No, I or no no Droid yet. Unbelievable. Well. It was just kind of one of those decisions because we were, <clears throat> it's kind of been an iterative process. So we wanted to make sure and get the iOS version locked down and really clean and ready before we, we moved to the Android version. I'm just giving so you a bad time. when the Android version comes out, it's going to be great. Sure, sure, absolutely. You know, and, and that it is always interesting. Uh, in fact, I'd, you know, if you don't, if you have a couple minutes here, I guess, what was your mindset uh, when you decided to go with the iOS side instead of the Android side first? We actually worked with a company out of Israel called uh, Peak Apps. And those guys are, they're, they're app experts. They're, they're great at what they do. And uh, it was actually their suggestion. Okay. Uh, we know that most of our mobile site traffic, uh, it's, it's, it's a slim majority, but it's a majority is actually iOS. Sure. That's kind of what we figured, too. It would be easier for us to kind of try to migrate some of that mobile site traffic to the mobile app just to kind of get feedback before we really push it. You know, it is interesting when you look at analytics and you look at your website and, and, and uh, determine, you know, who's using your site. I have a site, too, that uh, does fairly well. And we always look at the analytics from it, too. And about 60% of our users are iOS users. And that, that just always blows me away uh, that even though it's about, you know, the iPhone users, you know, I, I think it's running at about 40% now, which is amazing when you think about that. But a great percentage of them, of course, uh, travel to your site and to, to our site and things. So it is pretty amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I'm with you, too. With all of the versions of, of, you know, with all the different Android phones out there, 
iOS still dominating is kind of blows my mind at times. It really does. It really does. And and I know people, uh, you know, there's a lot that you can say. The one thing for me with Apple products in general is that you know what you're getting. You know, you might pay a premium for that, but you know exactly what you're getting when you get into the Android world. It's it's kind of hit and miss. I mean, you kind of pay for what you get there. If you want to get a, a cheap phone, you're probably going to get a cheap phone. That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that that applies to the the, uh, the marketplaces too. The, the what is it, Google Play? Yes. Is, is, as opposed to the, the iOS. The yeah, app exactly. Store. Exactly. Because it's that thing where I mean, you see you see all these apps get dumped every you know every six months or so. There's a big you know big alert that you know there's been 300 malicious apps that were removed from the from the Android store. And I think that, that you just don't really see that in the, the Apple store. Well, they, they, they hush it up better. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. No, there, I think that's a totally valid thing. I yeah. There, there's totally a, there's a big thing over the weekend again now that uh, there were quite a few malicious uh, apps that were removed from the iOS store as well. So it happens quite regularly actually on, on both sides, but um, yeah, very, very cool. So, uh, if you want the app, go. If you're an iOS user, you can go to the iOS store, get eBombs Digest, and that is that what it's called, uh, eBombs Digest. Yes, yeah, there is eBombs Digest. You can probably also search for just eBombs World, and it'll pop up. Okay, okay. And uh, any other news on your front? We got about two minutes here yet, so bring us up to date. Um, so there's actually quite a big there's, there's quite a bit going on on our end, and I'll try to make it quick. Uh, we actually have a full. We just did a, a mobile site redesign recently. Uh, it was launched. Up four months ago, five months ago, and we actually are about two to four weeks from a full desktop redesign. And it's not just a graphic overhaul. Um, it's actually there's, there's some new functionality for users as well as just general traffic. Okay. Um, some really exciting stuff for us. And um, we're starting to do a lot more uh, actual editorialization inside the, the, the not because we usually depend on user-generated content. We're actually right. creating a lot more content ourselves now. So oh, I see. Exciting. Okay. So you have a staff of writers and that type of thing that, that are on board that, that uh, you produce content in-house. Yeah, exactly. We're building up our team of writers at this time. Yeah. Okay, okay. But you're still going to be accessible to anybody. Definitely. So if Jim wants to become a contributor, how does he go about doing that? Uh, Jim could just come to the site and right there on the site, right in the, the top right corner, there's a place where you can sign up. And then once you sign up, you can just go ahead and start uploading right from there. The upload button is also up there on the right. You can upload blogs or galleries or videos. There's a whole bunch you can do on the site. What is the URL again, the uh, the address? It is ebombsworld.com. Spell so that, please. E B A U M S W O R L D.com. I'm already confused. I, I, I'll get it to you, Jim. We'll, oh, put, it, we'll you. put it on the Tech Ranch website, okay. too. But, uh, uh, Cole, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, Jim is your ultimate user and contributor. I, I can't believe you're not familiar with these guys. I am the snockinator. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for something like this because, you know, on Facebook, uh, things are, uh, well, you know, Facebook can get pretty snarky, but still, it's kind of hard to stand out. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You'll enjoy Ebombs World. Uh, it's 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 a great place to hang out for you. All so right, I'm telling you, I'm sounds telling like you. my kind of place. It is absolutely. Well, Colby, we really appreciate you being on. And uh, let's you know after you get the la- launch of the app on the Android, uh, let me know. We'll get you back on the show. Okay. I'd love that. All right. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Thanks, Thank Colby. You. All right, everybody. After the break, we'll continue about our top picks of 2015 for the holiday season. So come on back. Currently, it's 48. Live news headlines and weather together. Weekdays on Super Talk 1270. We're back to the Tech Ranch. Stream this program now at supertalk1270.com. Here is your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. And we'll turn it back over to Jim right away for a recap on what's going on in Bismarck. Okay, Marlo, no new developments, but I do want to uh, repeat what we were talking about earlier. Uh, we're hearing reports about a, we'll call it a gun scare at Bismarck High, apparently somebody, the story goes, and a lot of it, nothing is really confirmed at this point, but uh, somebody supposedly saw a guy with a gun in that neighborhood around 6th Street. So earlier today, this morning, there was uh, what they call a shelter in place which I guess is kind of like the old civil defense drills where basically they, uh, you know, they kind of get you inside the building and kind of hunker down there until the 
danger, if there is any, passes. Right. And to make a long story short, uh, the police and the SWAT team were at Bismarck High this morning to investigate. Uh, nobody came in, nobody went out, and the shelter in place was lifted a little over an hour ago. Okay. So things are cool as it is now. Uh, that That's all we know, really. Okay. Uh, we have our people uh, following the story, as, of course, all the media is around town. But uh, any information we have of substance beyond that, we will uh, we'll have it on the air, of course. Yep. We'll also have it on the website at supertalk1270.com. All right. But right now, there's a really not much to report, I mean, nothing to worry about, really, just uh, as a, it was all kind of a precautionary measure, uh, the police doing what they're supposed to do, and that's fine. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Fantastic. You know, I'm glad, glad to hear everything is okay there. Things are so. developing. We're just trying to find out what exactly, if anything, did happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Very good. Thanks for the update. Thank you. And uh, we will continue on with our top picks for gift giving this holiday season and i i'm sure you're gonna be surprised by this jim but the number one pick is drones <laughs> a drone for christmas a drone under the tree i they, like it they actually expect that they will sell over a million drones for christmas this year you know it'd be cool to have a little tiny one put it in a stocking and have it fly out of the stocking <laughs> when the kids come down the stairs seriously that would be so great well this is what's interesting about this you know that that's all taking off of course uh, but what's interesting is that the FAA was mandated by Congress in 2012 to have regulations in place for how to integrate drones into U.S. airspace by September 30th, 2015. Oh, that's great. And, of course, it's not done. Imagine Christmas morning, the kid wakes up in bed, and there's a, a drone hovering above him. <laughs> Merry Christmas! You, you really have uh, a very active imagination when it comes to this. Well, that yes. just occurred to me. You know, what can you do with it that would really uh, really be cool or really be special? Yeah, I guess that would be kind of cool. And if I had a child or a grandchild, that's what i do. A lot of them have red and green lights on them, too, you know, yeah. so you could actually have that little going on at the time. Yeah. And yeah. Remember the old uh, Dick Van Dyke episode where they had the little flying saucer is making weird noises? I never saw that. And it uh, turns out that the, what it was trying to say was Merry Christmas. Okay. Uh, but it just came out like, oh, yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I'll have to check that oh, out. Oh, Merry. <laughs> Loved Dick Van Dyke show. So, yeah. yeah, I'll have to check that out sometime. So, yeah, so they, um, they're they expecting that a million drones will be sold for Christmas presents or to be given as Christmas presents this holiday season, and a million people will have no clue how to operate them. That is my prediction. <laughs> 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 so we're going to have... Uh, drones basically uh, bashing into one another. Yeah, cutting yeah. grass, and you know that's that's basically what mine does when I crash it is it cuts a few blades of grass, you know, yeah. and things like that. So, uh, yeah, and that it is kind of scary, and and in that regard, that you're going to have all these drones unleashed in the public, and and basically no regulations covering them yet. So outside, you can't fly them over 500 feet, and you can't fly, fly them around crowded, uh, right. you know, events and that type of thing. That's basically the only two things you can't do. Uh, if as long as you're not getting paid for it, you can go fly them so. near military outlets. I'm sure uh, there's Minot a, Air Base will there's restrict a, that. There's a five mile uh, cushion around those type of facilities. So I would you, think, yeah. So you can't go by an airport or whatever. And you can get an app, by the way. There's yeah. an app for that too that'll actually show oh, you. We good. talked about this a few weeks ago uh, that the FAA has put out about where you can and can't fly. And it'll, you know, it'll actually uh, come in with your. GPS on your device, and it'll actually tell you if you're in an area that you can fly. What about over not. missile silos? No, nope. we have so many of them. Can't do that. Can't do that. Can't nope. go over a silo. Nope. And and you know, so any any military installation, any airport, you know, there's all kinds of things that uh, you know. Of course, you can't fly around the Capitol without special permission. Yeah, and there's all the White kinds House, of yeah. all of areas that you can't go, and all of that is is reflected in that app. So I always recommend people to go grab the app before you go fly. Drone. So you might be surprised, actually. Now, does the yeah does the app actually automatically turn it away, or do you still have to do that uh, manually? No, it actually it'll just tell you if it's legal to fly there or not. Okay. So it's not going to actually uh, not allow you to fly your drone because you can still fly your drone there. I expect sometime in the future that there will be a download that'll go to these. Uh, drones, but mm. that that will actually allow them to fly into space or not fly into space, but into those spaces. But the thing is, is that there are so many of them that don't have GPS built into them. Right. So how do you 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 can't really 
you know, enforce something like that because the technology on, on these lower uh, cost drones, these sub $200 drones that don't have GPS, you just fly them like a model airplane. That's what right. they are basically. Uh, you know, there's just no way that you can regulate that. So, yeah. so at this time, you know, you just have to, hopefully people will go out and learn how to fly them. So is that going to replace the old model airplane? Cause I know a lot of people are still into those. I don't think it'll replace it. In fact, I think it'll augment it a little bit more. I, I, I would actually see, you know, if people get into flying drones, that they might get into flying miniature aircraft and, and things. And rockets. Remember when we were kids, uh, there was always a couple of kids in school, the nerdy types, who would yeah. fly rockets. You, you'd buy these uh, little, uh, they're actually, they called them little engines, and they actually were, I don't know if it was like uh, what they use for fireworks or what, but you would actually, uh, you, there was like an electric thing that you could set them off right. or you could use a cherry bomb fuse yep. and they can they go up and they had a little mechanism where the parachute yep. would pop out yep. and they float back down you can actually buy a kit now that does the exact oh, same yeah. thing yeah they, they run anywhere from 20 bucks to a few hundred yeah, bucks I think walmart on has them your hobby stores hobby stores have them yeah. yep yeah ac- absolutely i was actually thinking about buying one not too long ago so yeah. Uh, and you're right, and they work on anything from uh, the to propulsion engines that you were talking about to using vinegar and baking soda. Oh, yeah. I always get baking powder and baking soda or mixed maybe up maybe Diet that, Coke so. and a Mentos. And a Mentos. Now, that would be interesting. That would go to the moon, man. <laughs> that would be interesting. We should make a, a rocket like that sometime. So, yeah, very, very cool. Um, next up on my list is the Photo iPad Scanning Dock. And I don't know, I'm going to show this on Meer, our Meerkat uh, followers here, but it's actually a, and I'll show that to you there, Jim, as well. Okay. So you got an iPad, and I'm going to guess gonna, okay. the top part there, not, okay. not the red circled one that I, we were oh, just talking okay. about there. Yeah. So across the top, you see the iPad. Sure. Hooks into like this docking station. There's a picture of a child there. Yeah. Yes. And what that does, that little docking station, it'll actually... Uh, charge your iPad up, but it will also, there's a feeder on there, so you can mm-hmm. scan your photos. You can oh, scan your papers, whatever, excellent. right into your, so yeah. you're not having to take photos, because what I do now, like with my devices, I take photos of pieces of paper, and then that's kind of the way I scan right. them. You know, it's not the best resolution, but it's okay. Well, now you have a device that you can actually hook up to your iPad or whatever and do that. Of course, a lot of your all-in-one machines that you buy now, your printers that have scanners on them also have apps attached to them and a lot of people might not know this but there's an app probably for your iphone or your android that actually syncs to your printer and then you can scan from your printer scanner uh, right back to your device as well so if you're looking for ways to get uh, scan images back to your devices uh, you may have everything that you need already in place for that so this next one now is called the iFusion Again, I'm going to show that to the Meerkat <laughs> audience. There, you just loving this now that we're oh, yeah. we're we're on we're, we're so on video. Yeah, yeah, we are. So I'm going to swing that around so everybody can look at Jim for a few minutes. So anyway, oh baby, how you doing, Lucky? Like, so look at that, Jim, and explain to me what you see. The, I the, see uh, looks like an old-fashioned office telephone. Very good, very good description. But very, the, yeah. the only difference about With it, an of course, iPhone in it. Yes, that's correct. Put the phone in the. Uh, you take the phone and uh, let's see here if I can do this here. It's like you take this thing here and you put the phone <laughs> in the thing there. And exactly right. Hope so it, hope it works. I so guess. You, so you put the phone in in its cradle, uh, and it does. It looks like an old-fashioned office phone. Yeah. And from there, uh, you can actually it actually syncs with that, and you can use the handset to answer calls, make calls, whatever oh, uh, on there. So it is, it is a, it's a functional device. If you want to uh, listen to music on there, there's a built-in speaker on it, charges your phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't know about you, but I still like having a handset when I talk to somebody on the oh, phone. Oh, me too. It's, you know, well, it's old habit. Old, old habits die hard. Well, and I think you just hear better and, and all of that stuff. Well, in this instance, when you have the opportunity to, whether it's at your office or at your home or whatever, you can do that with this device. So it's mm-hmm. pretty cool. It's called the iFusion. Supports most uh, Apple uh, devices, and I'm going to guess that they'll come out with one for Android devices as well in the future. And it will run a hundred and sixty-nine dollars. All right. So what a deal! There's a picture of my cat. <laughs> <laughs> a nice cat. I'm sure everybody's just excited to see yeah, that okay. too. Yeah. Well, it's good that you show that stuff off, Jim. Yeah. It really is. Do you use any technology for your cat? 
uh, technology. You know, do you, do you track your cat or anything like that? I would like to get a couple of those chips. Well, they're both. We have two cats. Okay. They're indoor cats. Okay. So we don't worry about them too much. Uh, once in a while, one of them actually gets out. And we go around the neighborhood, chase them around the neighborhood sure. for a few minutes, and they always come back sure. on their own anyway. Sure. Yeah. But I'd like to get uh, some of those chip things that right. you put it under their skin uh, where they can actually uh, you know, run the thing over it and identify oh. it. So you would go for that as opposed to something in a collar? You mean like uh, the invisible fence thing? Well, or? you can you can actually do the chip inside the collar as well. I mean, okay, I, you, obviously well, that can be removed if somebody were to, you know. Yeah you know, steal your pet or whatever. Uh, the thing is, the cats tend to lose the collars. Okay. Uh, both our cats, uh, they've had collars, but if they get outside, they lose them pretty quickly. I see. They, they get them caught. We have these safety collars, whereas uh, if they get caught in a brush or something, rather than have them choke on the collar, it'll just break away. Gotcha. You know, for their safety. And if that's the case, I mean, uh, the cat won't choke to death, but you also lose the chip. Right, exactly. So under the skin is the better route to go. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, after the, are we going to the break? We Let's are going to the break. Here. Okay, after the break, everybody, we will continue our discussion on the hot technology gifts for 2015. So come on back. Currently, it's 50. Super Talk 1270. Listen to high school sports action and live Bobcats hockey online at supertalk1270.com. Follow the guru of geek everywhere he goes. Post your comments or questions at thetechranch.com. Once again, your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. And we're the tech show with the best bumper music in the business. Yeah. Love our bumper music. Mm. Sit here and dance all day long. Where did you find this? It is actually, oh my goodness, you put me on the spot now. Um, it's a band out of Las Vegas. Oh. Um, Maybe for Las Vegas. Oh, I cannot believe I can't remember the name oh, of these okay. guys. I'll I'll check. I'll get it. I'll get it to you. Well, it's you got know. a great beat. I mean, they just kind of get yep. that one. This beat was going. actually this was actually a top forty song at one time. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. What they make a loop out of that? I yeah, would assume the actual song is not just like that. It is. It's a, it's yeah. a loop of it. But uh, yeah. um, the Mitsubishi T or uh, car commercials had okay. this on there too for oh, quite some okay. time. So yeah, it's a it's a very popular beat. Yeah. So anyway, we're talking about. Gifts for the holiday season, the top gadgets of what I think we're going to be getting this holiday season, anyway, what I'm seeing coming yeah. out. You know. Of course, the game industry. We're already starting to talk about Christmas. Can you believe that? It's, How sad is that? Well, ha have you been to the super stores lately? No. There, there's Christmas stuff everywhere already. Oh, God. So that's just. Well, no, my is. wife my wife shops at Walmart. Okay. Almost, it's almost religiously. Yes. I hate the place. And it's not political. It has nothing to do with the politics. I mean, I'm not against them doing business. Sure. I just don't like to go there. Sure. So I I, I let her do all the shopping. And she comes out, and uh, we put it in the car, and then we go home. I sit in the car <laughs> you and listen do, to the uh, radio. Or, wow. Or, uh, you know, I, I Read play. Read a book or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, yep. Listen to our show sure. on uh, the iPhone. Sure. So, cool. so I, I try to avoid that whole experience, frankly. Interesting. Especially this time of year, like you say, when the trees and the Insult and all that yep. garbage comes out. Yep, yep. Okay. Humbug. Yeah. Well, it, it is. It is out. I mean, and, and yeah. there's no. I mean, the Halloween section, of course, is larger than the Christmas section. Right I would now, but, hope, but that will change dramatically. Yeah. Rather quickly here. I'm so. waiting for Saint Swithin's Day. Yeah. And all the Saint <laughs> Swithin's Day decorations. <laughs> And, of course, we'll be broadcasting live from Charlotte, North Carolina next Charlotte, week. Charlotte, North Carolina. So I will have the president of Allied Bank on, uh -huh. and we're going to be talking about uh, banking online. Charlotte's a very high-tech city. Yeah, There's it a is. a lot of cutting-edge stuff going yeah. on there. So it should be very, very interesting. I'm looking yeah. forward to the trip there as well. So stay tuned for that next week, everybody. Hope that you come back for that. Um, Wi-Fi. Of course, we talk about Wi-Fi all the time. Yeah. You know how you get your internet and your network to your devices not wirelessly? Not in this building. Yeah, not in this yeah, building. It never works in this building. Never but, works in this building. We've been but I, I use Wi-Fi everywhere I can now. I used yes. to never use it, but I use it everywhere now because it does save you money. It does save you money, yes. Yeah. So imagine if light could be turned into a way to receive information. Light? As in coming from the light bulbs above us right now. Well, I mean, light is a form of energy. That's correct. That's correct. So there's this company actually has been around for a while, and we looked at this at CES this year. Might have reported on it a little bit from there. I don't think we talked about it on the show, but I think right. when I was on the TPN network, we talked about it quite a bit there. It was called LiFi, not Wi-Fi, but LiFi, L-I, -fi. L -I 
FI, Li-Fi, and it actually works through your lights. So you set up okay. some type of, of uh, data router type of situation. It actually goes through the electrical grid in your house or your business. And wherever you see light, like when you turn on the light switch, yeah, you will have internet I or your see network. the light. And I got the internet. And it's fast. I mean, it is fast, fast. How fast? It's the speed of light. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. So, <laughs> making myself laugh, Jim. Mm. But think about this and, and think of the possibilities. You know, I mean, instead of putting, um, when you don't want to have the, I'm just thinking of the kids, for example, you put them to bed at night, right? right. And, you, and you, you're tired of them being on their devices or whatever. Yeah. Once you turn the lights off, no more internet. I love it. You know, so there's there's some advantages, disadvantages to it though too. Because for example, if I were using this to watch television and I, I watch most of my TV via internet now, uh, I would have to have a light on. And generally speaking, I don't have lights on in the room when I'm watching yeah. television. Well, it's supposed so. to be better for your eyes anyway to have a light on while you're watching TV. Probably, but Probably. I don't care about my personal health, obviously. So yeah. I don't. You know, I, I guess I'm, I'm for the I'm for the movie theater experience more than anything else. So, so there's some downsides to it too. But the ability to to push internet, I mean, when you really think about this, you could actually provide Wi-Fi or Li-Fi to an entire neighborhood because you could actually beam oh, okay. it through the lighting system outside. Yeah. You know, and and I don't know if they. I would imagine they'd have to be turned on all the time, but it might be actually cheaper to do that than it would be to keep your router turned on all the time. I don't know. We'll have to look into this a little bit more. But it's very interesting, and like I said, it's very fast. And and uh, when I looked at this at a computer, the dongle that you plugged into your computer had a little crystal on it, and that's how it received the light signal. Okay. Then, you know, so there's a little crystal that receives the data, and uh, that's how it moves. But like I said, it was it was blazing fast. It was amazing how fast the internet was coming across that. And that was at a show that generally you can't hardly get internet because there's 200,000 people crammed into a couple buildings and everybody's trying to get online with their devices right then. Yeah. And uh, difficult, but they had no problem. So I thought it was interesting. So just something, a trend to look out for. Uh, other things that are going to be hot this winter for gift giving, I think is are going to be wireless or Bluetooth speakers. Have you ever played? You, you have a Bluetooth speaker, don't you, Jim? Uh, no, but I know a lot of people who have them. Okay, so these things are kind of kind of getting pretty hot. Uh, there are devices like Sonos. Have you ever heard of Sonos before? I've heard the name. Okay. I don't really know anything about it. So Sonos is is a series of speakers that you can put throughout your house, and you can run them independently or you can run them together. So if you wanted to put together a surround sound system around your TV, you could do that. And you run it through your device. So if you have an iOS or, or uh, an Android or whatever, you actually run those speakers through your device. The sound is amazing. I have a couple of friends who have these, and, and they're, they're amazing. You can zone them so one speaker can play one tune. Another speaker can play another tune. You know, it's just, it's just kind of cool stuff. You're yeah. smiling. Must have been something fun on Facebook. Oh, I was just uh, updating <laughs> something here. <laughs> I thought maybe the music was making you smile. So okay, well that too. So um, so Sonos, you know, has that. But I think the big thing will be our portable or you know systems that you can utilize with your current stereo system and those type of things. Those are I think are going to be very popular. Right. Uh, Siren Pro and it's S Y R E N Pro is probably the leader in this realm. So basically, there's a unit. It's a Bluetooth speaker, so it hooks up to your device, okay? Yeah. And from there, it creates its own field of wireless, you know, like Wi-Fi, its own Wi-Fi field. So then you can put other speakers to that. So you sync to the one unit, and then it goes to all the other units, and then you can have yourself a, a surround sound system or whatever, all oh, wireless. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, you think about... Uh, not having to run wires around your television, which you can do now, but this takes it to a whole nother level. Yeah. Uh, your stereo can be connected to this. Your iPhone or your Android can be connected to it. So it's all about connecting all these devices well, to the same system. Well, the more wireless you can go, the better, in my opinion. Well, I really I, don't like having a lot of wires. I think around. most people agree with that. Yeah. It's nice not to have all that wire laying around. It's a and, pain in the neck. It it's really a fire is. fire hazard for some people. And yep. It's yep. just a mess. But on the other side, of course, wired is certainly more reliable. 
Oh, yeah. You know, so it's like a landline, you know, it's more reliable. Exactly. In some ways than a regular uh, iPhone. Exactly. Exactly right. So the next thing on my list, so be, be looking for wireless speakers. And if you have kids or millennials or whatever, and I shouldn't just pick on them, I guess, but many people, I would love to get a Bluetooth wireless speaker. So Bluetooth is still a hot thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very, very hot thing. Yeah. So, and, and uh, you know, the, the new generation of Bluetooth is coming out, they're... You know, it's interesting with Bluetooth. You get, you get me on a whole other topic here. Oh, now, okay. But that's okay. Um, so Bluetooth, generally when it came out, it was only supposed to go about five feet. Right. So the, the idea behind Bluetooth is that it would, it would, you know, basically work with your Bluetooth headset from your phone. Yeah. And then it so would... So you could have your phone in your pocket. Exactly. And leave it there. And, exactly. Okay, right. And you wouldn't interfere with anybody else around you. It had yeah. that short distance, and that was that. You know, you just looked like a crazy person because you'd be walking down the street talking out loud to nobody. You don't apparently. know. You don't know who is. You, know, <laughs> you could always tell people who were talking to themselves walking down the street. Yeah. Now, to, you know, in the past, maybe needed a little help. You know, but nowadays <laughs> you have maybe those people need a little help anyway if they're talking yeah. to their Bluetooth. I don't know, but. Well, I love uh, when somebody gets into an argument on their Bluetooth. It and is walking funny. Along saying, <laughs> "It is absolutely funny. my first experience yeah. with a Bluetooth headset because I didn't even know they existed." Yeah. Was that exact scenario? I come walking out of a business meeting and this guy is screaming at himself. I had no clue what was going on. You know, I just kind of wandered around, and after yeah. for a few minutes, I'm like, "He's got this doohickey on his ear. Maybe he's talking to somebody." Through I love it. You got this guy walking down the uh, streets, going, "What kind of idiot do you think I am?" <laughs> then it's exactly what you're thinking. So yeah, that's not how I told you to do it. <laughs> Jeez, get with the program, people. <laughs> and it happens every day now. Of course, the geezer does that, but all, he all just the time. does it, yeah. And in the car, too, is the other one. Yeah. You know, you, you see people getting emotional behind there because they're talking through their car system yeah. now, right? And they're screaming at their car, and their arms are going <laughs> like crazy at a stoplight. And, uh, you know, it's not so much, it's not so funny anymore when people are singing to the radio. It's funny yeah. when you see them, you know, reacting to it. Oh, so, anyway, yeah. uh, with that, everybody, thanks for joining us again this week on the Tech Ranch. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Pleasure as always. And we'll be joining you next week from Charlotte. So, later. Hope to see you then.